Should you give a recorded statement or an examination under oath when you're bringing a claim for personal injuries? Hi, I'm Tom Friedman. I'm a lawyer in Nevada. And when you're bringing a claim for personal injuries, you're probably going to hear from two different kinds of claims adjusters. The first kind of claims adjuster is the adjuster for the insurance company that insures the person or the corporation that caused your injuries. A simple example, you get rear-ended. The person that rear-ended you has insurance. Their insurance company has a claims adjuster, and this is the claims adjuster you're probably going to hear from first if you don't call your own. And this claims adjuster is going to call you up and say, hey, I'd like to get a recorded statement. Should you give the recorded statement? Well, in Nevada, it's not required by law for you to give a recorded statement, and in many other states, it's not required either. So what are the advantages of giving a recorded statement? Well, before we even get to that, what is a recorded statement? Well, it's exactly what it sounds. The adjuster calls you up, say, hey, I'm nice adjuster from XYZ Insurance Company, and I want to uh, ask you some questions, and I'm just going to record it. Is that okay with you? And you're supposed to say, fine. They'll ask you a little bit about you know your name, your background, where you live, things like that. They'll ask you about the accident, what happened, and then they'll ask you about your injuries. They'll be very nice about the whole thing. They'll thank you, and that'll be it. So why do they do this? Well, they're going to tell you if you give a recorded statement, they're going to be able to figure out liability quickly. They'll be able to get you that rental car faster, maybe. They'll maybe be able to get your car fixed faster. I don't know what they're going to tell you, but there's usually some sort of a carrot that incentivizes you to give the recorded statement. Well, why would you not want to give a recorded statement then? Well, the insurance company is really looking to pay as little money as possible for your claim in a lot of cases. And so they are hopeful that you're going to give them information that they can use against you later. The uh, recorded statements are often transcribed into a transcript, sort of reads like a little bit like a play. And then as the case goes on, if you get a deposition or something like that, the lawyer for the insurance company is going to take your transcript and he's going to use that to cross-examine you. You know, well, Mr. Injured Person, the day after your accident, you said you didn't hurt that much and you didn't have any medical care. Why do you suddenly have $100,000 of medical care and say you can't do this, this, and this? Well, that's great stuff to cross-examine somebody with. So you might want to think twice about giving this recorded statement, especially when it's not required. Now, the second insurance adjuster you're going to hear from, or you may call yourself, is your own. So why would you talk to your own adjuster? Well, if there's an accident, you may need to call your own adjuster anyway because your policy said so. This depends on policies, jurisdictions, things like that. But the real reason you want to contact your own adjuster is, let's say we're back to the car crash again, the person that rear-ended you has either A, not enough insurance, or B, unfortunately, no insurance at all. Well, you thought ahead, you went and purchased your own uninsured motorist or and underinsured motorist on your policy. So what does that mean? That means this person that hits you either doesn't have insurance or doesn't have enough. You can bring a claim on your own insurance policy to recover the amount of money the person that hits you should be paying you. So in that case, your own adjuster wants to know the facts of the case, what happened, and they're going to say either A, I want to do a recorded statement, or B, I want to do something called an examination under oath. And they're going to do this so they can get their information to evaluate the claim and essentially determine a value to it. So uh, what's different here is you've got an insurance contract with your own insurance policy and your insurance contract very well may have a paragraph in there that says if required you must give an examination under oath and if you don't do that you're not cooperating with the investigation if you don't cooperate with the investigation the insurance company probably doesn't have to pay you so if they want you to do an examination under oath and it's in your policy you probably got to do it but here's the rub. The examination under oath is probably going to be done by one of the insurance company's attorneys, and it's probably going to take place in this attorney's office, and there's going to be a court reporter there who may swear you in and then take down everything you say in a transcript, just like a deposition. So because the insurance company's got their own, own attorney there asking you questions, it would definitely be advisable for you to get your own attorney as well to make sure everything goes as it should. If you've got any questions, please feel free to give me a call, drop me an email, and thanks very much for watching.